Hey guys, welcome to another video in our Arduino series. We're going to be looking today at the analog to digital converter function that is a part of the Arduino. Um, I don't know if you've ever seen the ADCs or analog digital converters. I go into kind of a more in-depth uh, feel of these in one of my other videos. I'll probably link it below uh, that's on ADCs for an actual microcontroller where you actually use and uh, basically code and everything, the ADC that's on board a microcontroller. This is similar. They're using the Atmel processor and they're basically just using the ADC that's on board, uh, the specific micro that they've selected for the Arduino system. So one thing that is kind of cool about it is they have some uh, kind of pre-scaling type stuff that, you have, that is built into the functions that they give you. So it makes it very simple to do analog digital conversion with this guy. Um, I'll show you that more when we get into the coding section of it, but for right now we're going to take a look at the hardware. What I'm going to do for this one is instead of just showing you the basic example that comes with the Arduino uh, coding IDE, um, I'm going to kick it up a notch and we're going to do kind of almost like a little, little lighting exercise with it using LEDs, which is kind of cool to look at uh, and impress your friends with, <laughs> I guess. Anyway. I've got some LEDs hooked to our digital I.O. here. We've got some 470 ohm uh, shunt resistors for current limiting. So we've got our LEDs here. I've put eight. Just I had eight laying around, so I used eight. So we've got eight LEDs here. Um, the anodes connected, obviously, to the, to the plus side of everything. And then the cathodes then connected here around here to the ground. So then we've got our... 20 kilo ohm, I just had the 20, 20 kilo ohm resistor. You could use 10 kilo ohm, 5 kilo ohm, whatever you want to use. But I just had a 20K laying around, so that's what I used. So we got a 20K, we're stretching 5 volts and ground across the, the two main ends of the resistor. And the wiper here, we're just uh, taken to the analog uh, input of the Arduino. So that way we can get our uh, swing from 5 volts basically to 0 volts with the wiper. So that's all there is to the uh, simplistic hardware. So we'll go ahead and since I'm not going to make, make this a two-parter, we're kind of flying along. So I think we'll just go ahead, uh, pull up. Whoops, I'm opening this up. So this popped out of here. What I will do is I'll go ahead and open up the software for us right away. And we'll bring that over now. So now looking at the Arduino software, uh, the code that I've done, what I did was I used the same basic example uh, if you come in here and go to analog and then go to analog in out serial it's basically what I used in fact it still says analog out serial you know anyway what this is is I just edited it modified and put my own uh, put our LED stuff into it so this is what I'm using for the basis fairly straightforward we're defining our analog pin a0 we're defining our an analog out pin which I didn't use they said to use you know attach an LED to we can just take this out um, if we wanted to um, I'll just go ahead and take that out because we don't really need that uh, we're doing our own LED work essentially they're giving you two values because they do write this out the serial port which is kind of cool up here in the corner see this button it's called serial monitor I don't know how well this is showing up but up here in the upper right there's a little magnifying glass called serial monitor and what it is is basically like a terminal window is what it does it pulls up a terminal window that's set up at the baud rate and everything that you've chosen and it will uh, print out anything that you're displaying so kind of cool like I said the Arduino is kind of neat it uh, greatly simplifies like the serialing because you know you can check out some of my other videos I've got uh, doing setting up RS-232 communication between a PC and a uh, micro microcontroller and you can uh, it's a little bit more involved uh, you have to set up the port and everything we'll see since this guy has a USB port that you're connecting it into and what it is, is it's doing like a max uh, what is it 2200 chip or whatever that chip is that converts the USB to a, a virtual serial port that's basically what they're doing on this thing and so um, they're talking serially to a chip that's on board that then is com doing all the USB conversions is what we're doing so anyway with this guy so anyway that's all taken care of for you so it makes it uh, quite simple of a connection so what, we're, what they're doing is we've got a sensor value that this will be the actual um, value that it will read from the potentiometer and then it will give you the uh, digital representation of this 
Now, I will have to admit, I just did this. I actually just threw it together, slammed it together, and decided I'd just make this video off of it. So um, I haven't really dug too super in-depth into all of the values and if, it, if it's, you know, how accurate it is and accuracy and everything else. I guess I'll just leave that to you guys to discover on your own how accurate this really truly is. Well, anyway, for our LEDs, basically for our kind of like our Christmas lights, our eight LEDs, I have just defined eight uh, integer variables, variables, excuse me, that is going to hold all the pins. And what pins I've chosen is two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and then pin 12. Just because I wanted to try to stay away from as many PWM pins as I have to, just because sometimes the PWM pins can cause your LED to sit there and blink when you want it to be off. So anyway, so those are the pins that I've chosen. Just for my application, you choose what you want. And we start the setup. Uh, function here that sets everything up, basically your initialization function. So we've got our serial.begin and 9600. We're setting 9600 baud is what we were setting for our communications. Also we're setting up our pins. We're setting them up for digital output. Um, if you don't know how this, I'll, I mean, I'll explain I think a little more in the previous video of how this works, but we're setting up all of our pins. Pretty straightforward. Um, then we're setting it all up. We're, we're writing them all low. So therefore we want Initially, when the first when it boots up or receives power, we want everything to be turned off. We don't want any any uh, lights to turn on uh, whatsoever initially when it first starts up. Then we begin our main uh, loop, and when we begin this, we're going to take and read the analog pin using the read the analog read function. The pin we put in our our pin number, you know, we defined above, and that'll save that in the sensor value. That's the raw analog uh, read that comes in. Then what we're going to do is we're going to scale that read uh, with the this map function. Okay. So now basically what this is doing is we're taking our sensor value and then we're mapping it. What the map function does is it remaps a value coming in to whatever range you want to map it to. So it comes in 0 to 1023, okay, because it's a 1024 you know, uh, so it's probably a 10-bit. That would be a 10-bit uh, ADC that's on board. So you've got 0 to 1024, essentially, but they give it 1023 because uh, there's probably a sign bit or something. I don't know. Like I said, I haven't really delved too deeply into this. But you got 0 to 1023, and then they're remapping that to 0 to 255. So they're scaling it, effectively. They're, they're scaling it from 10-bit to 8-bit is what they're doing. So then they come in here, and they give an analog write, and then they do out this analog pin. I think that was the the one that they were doing. Uh, I think up above that we we had deleted previously. I think that's what we were doing. That was the analog out pin. Yeah, we can take this out because that was just setting that that uh, LED, and we don't need that LED. So take that out. Okay. So now now we're gonna print the values to the terminal or printed out the serial. So what you do is you do a serial dot print, just kind of like a printf statement, and you're going to say, they're saying, you know, they're giving it a heading of sensor equals, and then they're printing out the value. They do the same thing with the output, except it looks like they put a tab in there. The backslash T is for tab. And then we've got uh, the, the print the value. Now here's where my portion comes in. What I'm going to do is I, I basically ran this uh, to start with without this in here just to see what numbers I was going to get and it looked like every time at least the pot that I have isn't just a smooth turning pot it actually has um, different um, positions to it it's a multi-position pot so basically as you turn it it you can feel it click from one position to the next so it'll click specific resistances as it goes around well as you do that, it, it basically equates to, it moves it by twos, essentially. So if you start out with the pot completely at zero, and then you start moving up, it, it will go zero, two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve, you know, fourteen, sixteen, eighteen, and go up by twos digitally, which means, what I mean by that is this output value will change by twos as I move the uh, positionable potentiometer, okay? So as it clicks up, it will go up by two. So when I notice that, I basically said, all right, if the output value is greater than eight, I'm gonna start at eight because it looked like it was a little flaky down towards the side. And you'll notice that with potentiometers, when you get towards either extreme of the potentiometer, they'll get a little wiggly, they'll wiggle, the voltage will kind of wiggle around. And so the ADC has a hard time tracking that because it's all wiggly. 
So anyway, I picked a, a value that was that was off of zero. So I picked picked to start at eight. You know, you guys could have started at 10, 12, 20, whatever. And depending on what your range is, zero to 255, and you're using five volts and whether it's a 10K or a 20K or 5K or what your resistance is, that all matters. So that's why I say the easiest thing to do is just don't do any of this. Just go ahead and let it print to the screen. Do the serial monitor, twist it around, see what it'll do. In fact, I'll do that. I'll actually, I'll actually let's see. I'll actually just do that real quick. I'm going to hit serial monitor. And right now, I actually have it plugged in. And right now, we're sitting at a 5. Okay, I'm going to reach over here to the other side and start twisting it. As you can see, it starts to increase. And see what that's doing, the reason it's moving in such solid amounts is because like I said this potentiometer that I'm using um, is a positionable one which means it, it like clicks each time you twist it you can feel it clicking to the next value okay so that's essentially what we what we got and so I noticed that's that's the way that it moves so really slick I like that that's a really cool feature so now what I'm gonna do is well that like messed up my screen here Let's minimize that and bring it back up. There we go. So now I chose the value of 8 to be my starting point. And I said if the output value is greater than or equal to 8, then I'm going to take pin 1 and make it high. Otherwise, it needs to be low. Okay. Same thing if it jumps up to the next notch, which in my case, it'll be 10. Then I want to output the next LED, turn the next LED on. Otherwise, turn it off. And so on and so forth, all the way up to the final LED, which in my case, in my situation, may not be yours, depends on your resistance values, depends on what kind of pot you're using, if yours is like mine and it, it, it basically is positionable where it clicks, um, you know, it, it'll be similar, but you know, what, your situation may differ and that's why I suggest using the serial monitor and check it out, see where you're at, see what your tolerances are, where it's gonna wiggle, all that stuff to set this up. And then I've got 22, and high and low and then that's pretty much it now this is kind of important just like any other ADC ADCs have times to settle how ADCs actually work is they have basically a capacitor network that's in them and as you charge the capacitor it sees the voltage once the voltage comes up then it measures it and all that jazz well then it has to discharge out settle back down to then begin the next reading so you want to give it a little bit of time to do that and in this case they're given a two millisecond delay which is more than enough in fact it's probably that's that's a lot. That's a lot of time. In fact, most of the time, most ADCs that I've seen um, are usually around two microseconds. Some really precision ones are down to nanoseconds. They're they're really quick, um, depending on you know what resolution you're trying to measure and how fast. But I've seen them down to like two microseconds or maybe a yeah nanoseconds. That's that might be I might be exaggerating there. It might be like you know a hundred nanoseconds or something like that. But um, but it's but I've seen them down around two ten to somewhere around in there um, microseconds before so that's that's a lot of time but anyway um, for what we're doing that's pretty much it so now guys what I'm gonna do is I'm going to just show you guys a video since this one is a pretty much it's, it has no interaction with the computer you basically just load it in you hit verify and then you hit upload and you just load it to it and as long as it has power it executes this code and works so since I've got this all Put together i think what we'll do is we'll end the video here and we will take and come back in the next video with the demo of it so again i will go ahead and post the sketch on my uh project code link as usual that way you'll be able to find it as well as the uh wiring diagram that i made how it's very simple but i'll post it anyway that way you guys have that and that'll be pretty much it for this simple little project hope you enjoyed it guys uh, hope this is helpful for you all like subscribe share um, your thumbs up your likes That's that really helps the channel really helps me helps me buy this these equipments and and these different things to uh, Bring to you guys so you guys can see how they work All right guys. I'm out of time. Thanks a lot for watching and keep on programming keep on building cool stuff and with that That ought to do it. Take care guys